Like many fighting games themselves, every individual FGC has a hidden boss. A mysterious character that seems like a rumor until they arrive on their own terms and have you firmly grasping their hand and that L. Months will pass, and you'll feel that you've improved since the last time they put you in check, and then they show up again and beat you just as convincingly. The person you pray is able to make it to some major sometime soon. For Massachusetts, for many years, this person has been Kevin Tech. Kevin Tech has told me that he only wants to enter tournaments if he feels he can win them, and he feels it will be a challenge to do so. His pride has to be on the line, but he awaits the chance to lose, too. Reviewing footage of his matches online, I found that, always, Kevin Tech gets up more quickly from a win than from a loss. He even seems more likely to have a drink or a toast after losing than winning, impressed by anyone that can beat him in any game he's elected to put time into. It's pretty clear to me that these are habits, and this is the mindset of a champion. But it's best that I don't try to make too many reads on Kevin's near future. That doesn't go well for many players. It's a challenge to make reads on Kevin Tech, but it can be challenging for people to get a read on him as an individual too. So Beyond Frame Data has gone ahead and put him in the corner facing Scion, where he'll be dealing with a half hour of active frames from our cameras. Knowing Kevin, he'll probably prove victorious here too. What's going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of Beyond Frame Data. I'm your boy Haney, aka Scion, and today I'm doing with the homie, the PCG like nine times champion, even though they had seven of them only. Uh, your boy Kevin, what's going on, Kevin? I'm good. How's it going, Kevin? You go by Kevin Tech, yeah. right? Yeah. Perfect. Um, so talk to me, man. Hit us with the hit us with the juice. Like, when did you when did you get into fighting games? How early was it? What was your first game and everything like that? Could you with that? So I got into fighting games. Um, if, if you guys know, like, uh, do you know Vivo, Vivo, or yeah. this uh, streaming platform yeah, yeah, that yeah. used to exist? So there was a bunch of uh, Street Fighter Three, Third Strike. Videos up there, and um, this is before I even saw the Daigo Perry oh. and stuff like that. And me and my cousin would just uh, sit around at night, just watching these guys play Third Strike. Yeah. And um, so we, we went off and we bought, bought Street Fighter 3, and we would play it, but we couldn't do anything, anything significant. And then I would m win most of the games, and then and then uh, we. My cousin would complain, oh, this game's bad, this game sucks, and we'd go back to the store, GameStop, return it, get another fighting game like Soul Calibur, come back, beat his ass, and then <laughs> we have to go back again. Repeat? Yeah, return every fighting game. And then, Did they have a return policy? It's like the seven day <laughs> yeah. return policy? It's like the seven day, seven but day we'd go back. Shout outs to the store. <laughs> we'd go back that day because he couldn't take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't even about that, he just couldn't take it. So tech and anything like that. And then um, as like as far as like started playing with like Street Fighter 4. Okay, that's when it got like serious series? Yeah, yeah. like uh, actually HD Remix. That's when it got okay. Yeah, yeah, so I played that online using Chun-Li, just doing cheap stuff. That I thought was cheap and I was winning a lot, just abusing stuff, tactics. Part of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah which was like just walking forward with the throw or the medium punch and then <laughs> And then uh, I got Blast Blue, and then I got Street Fighter 4. So you're not even really like originally just a Capcom head. You played all kinds of fighting yeah, first, like yeah. Third Strike into 2D remakes to the Soul Calibur. Like you were just kind of bouncing around. Yeah. So yeah. So that, that definitely that route. And then when I decided to, I like I want to do this, mm -hmm. is when I actually got the stick to play Street Fighter 4, and I was like, oh maybe this will help me get you know the extra boost. But I, yeah. So I, but I don't even think that helped. It was just more like more le learning curve, learning curve, and then um, and also got it because I used to get blisters just from playing so much uh, on the D-pad. Yeah. Okay. Why fighting games? Like why over other genres? Like you used to play racing games, right? Yeah. So I like games like Midnight Club, um, Gran Turismo, other racing games. But I, initially, actually, when I went out to go look for a scene to actually compete, I was looking for a FIFA. FIFA scene. Okay. Because I, that, at that time, That's I was really good, and I'm Cape Verdean, and we're big into soccer. Yeah, yeah, we're big into soccer, so all, I used to beat all the guys, all the guys, and this was PS2 era. So when I was looking for a scene, I was looking for that, but I could never find anything. 
And then I found Game Underground over at uh, Framingham. So and Jamie shot his game underground. Yes. So I went there and they were big into Street Fighter 4, and that's how I played Street Fighter 4. Who did you play Street Fighter 4? So at launch, I used um, I used Guile. Vanilla. Yeah, Vanilla. I used Guile because I, I liked them in Street Fighter 2. Uh, HD Remix it was so cool. Yeah, yeah, I used Guile. But it was I could not win or do anything. Like I was pretty bad with him. So I moved on to to Balrog. And I, he could easily win just by scrubbing people out. <laughs> and then I was like, ah, this is kind of boring. So I went to to Ryu, and it was kind of a challenge again. I didn't have any. I stuck with Ryu for a while. Yeah, he was challenging you know? Yeah, I wasn't too good with him, but uh, he was a good character. I was yeah. just not great um, until like I faced uh, Lucky D, uh, Daniel, uh, in. Uh, the Dawson versus Ryu match. And yeah, I, I, yeah I, I didn't even know it was a, I, I didn't know it was a bad bad matchup or anything like that. And he just like he was just like forty to zero me. Yeah, and then I was like, yo, yo one more game, one more game, that whole situation and then it was like fifty zero like, All right, thank you, thank you for the match. Was, yeah, and then that stuck with me though, so that's how I went to Makoto because I was like right, man, just bully. Yeah, I was like, I can't I can't beat Dawson and I need a character. And I looked at Makoto, I was like, like I was playing, messing with her, I was like, yeah, this is, this is pretty good. <laughs> so, what's, what's the, for people who don't know, uh, what's the difference between Ryu and Makoto and the Dawson matchup that you think it was, a, what, what, what about her normals that was different to Ryu's that can help you? Yeah, it's just, uh, for one, her normals, like you said, you could just uh, uh, buffer any crouching medium punch, standing medium punch, crouch short. Like as a whip punish into EX hat that you get the knockdown. He's no. dead. Yeah. Yeah. He's, dead. <laughs> he's basically dead. dead because you just mix them up, he's stunned, he dies. Um, also her dash. So you block any negative normal, anything like that, you dash up. You're in range. He presses a normal, you EX grab command grab, armor, grab the normal, you know? So yeah, basically he and she just mauls him. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Um so from Street Fighter 4, where you you primary, because everybody knows, uh, for those who don't know, you you bounce around a lot to like a bunch of different games. Yeah. Was Street Fighter 4, you're like, all right, let me stop playing everything else right now. Let me focus on Street Fighter 4 for a bit. Mm -hmm. Or was it just because? Are you more like into that game because a lot of other players are playing that game? Yeah, it was definitely that. Uh, definitely that. Yeah, we only had really a, more. I, I don't want to say it's more serious players, but like that was my mentality. Like. We saw a lot of Japanese players, and we had a big scene for Street Fighter 4. I would see other games that I like, like Persona 4 Arena, yeah. and Mortal Kombat 9, <laughs> and then, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, about that, yeah, yeah, and, uh, but I kind of fell into the trap where people be like, oh, those, these games aren't deep enough, or they give too much credit to Street Fighter. Yeah. So uh, I ended up sticking with Street Fighter, because there were more people, I, I like to play people, so, yeah. Okay. Um, so you kind of just went into it was you and your cousin pretty much right like you yeah who, who's your main training partner of that era so at that era my main training partner was online we had online it was at, on xbox 360 and it was uh we used to be i used to be in this uh xbox group called ngb which i still don't know what it means and but you'd be surprised that we had people like smug yeah, oh, in that shit. group, man. Yeah, he used to go by like NGB Roses or something like that. And you know, Smug makes a million names. Yeah. And we used to yeah. play, and we used to like play, ma play the Dudley match, like Mirror match, and yeah, wow. just have fun. And then actually, one time, I think it was at Summer Jam, he saw me and he's like, Yo, you're NGB Yayas. And then he's like, Oh my god, I thought you'd be like this big dude, then like big black dude. I was like, What? Makoto <laughs> player? How? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how. But, yeah. Sick. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you, I want to touch about, upon something you actually mentioned earlier. You talked about um, Mortal Kombat 9. Mm -hmm. Now, for all those that know, you know, you know, Kevin plays Street Fighter 5 now, but he also he also plays Dragon Ball Fighters. You also play Mortal Kombat 11. Mm -hmm. Mortal Kombat 9 and Mortal Kombat 11. If you could prefer one over the other, what would it be? Yeah. So if I'm trying to have fun at a very casual level, I would say MK9. MK9. This is definitely more fun. Definitely more fun, but the higher you go, you go in level, you're not having fun anymore because you can't pick the character you want to play. 
and the stuff you have to deal with yeah. and the stuff you're doing to people it just gets like yeah. it's very crazy but in terms of mk11 i feel like there's still a lot of it's very it's mk yeah it's very mk and i like that i like different stuff yeah. so i like when they stick to the block buttons and do their own things the dollar combo whatever that yeah. people are scared of um, so I, yeah, I like their their originality, and I love I love MK11. I love it like the, the way you play footsies, neutral, everything. I still love it, even though it's I would have more fun not taking the game seriously at MK9. But I, if I'm gonna compete, I'd rather play MK11. MK11. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, that's a good answer. I was just that, that's straight up from those because there's a lot of controversy between Mortal Kombat 9, Mortal Kombat 11. Mm -hmm. A lot of people saying Mortal Kombat 11 is it, or it's yeah. like basic, I suppose, or it's yeah. easier. Yeah, I can see like. Yeah, MK9 has crazy stuff and more stuff you can do. But if you're gonna play at the higher level, highest level, you probably see like two characters. Okay. So yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Cabal, the Cyrex. Sonya. Yeah. Um. Kenshi. Yeah, Kenshi. 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 Hurt, oh, the, that was amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down one poke to interrupt. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, the fan. The cabal would like, you could even use smoke or cabal on reaction to fan. And, uh, mm -hmm. just deal with yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, now, you, you're also a fan of like watching sets too. You're not just kind of the person that sits there and grinds to me. Mm -hmm. You actually like to spectate and like, watch high level play and stuff like that. What are your, what's your favorite set in any fighting game ever to watch? Like, what was your favorite set to watch? Mm, yeah. I wasn't expecting uh, that one. Yeah, because yeah, it's a hard question because uh, okay. 999999999 percent of the time, me spending with fighting games is watching. Okay. So I basically just wake up and I find pop a good stream. yeah, pop in a stream, find the best player I can find. It doesn't matter what fighting game, and I'll watch them. But to say a favorite set. Yeah, favorite tournament set. All right, if you want, I can keep it. I'll go through it in games. Uh, yeah. Okay, so maybe I'll, I'll maybe if I if I want to like pay respect to a set, I'll say like um, Momochi playing Makoto versus Itabashi Zangi. Okay. Because that was a, a matchup that it, it, it kind of, he kind of taught me how to play Makoto and what else she can do besides just go in and go ham. Because against Zangi, if you do that, you just kind of die. And he showed me that you can win that match if you're smart and you use your own play style to do so. So I kind of took from that, and it was it was a sick Makoto, so I would say that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Street Fighter. Okay, so Momochi versus the Bashi from Street Fighter Four, mm -hmm. Street Fighter Five. Mm -hmm. Maybe Punk versus Tokido Evo. Evo. Yes. Grand Final. Why? Just because the hype, like the hype, the people wanting Punk to win. Or Tokyo to win. It was like we either we were kind of like happy the way. Yes, the and the and the emotion emotion after the the, the set. Uh, we had what Punk crying and yeah, Tokyo well, every, crying. Everybody was yeah, crying. Yeah. Punk was crying. I was crying. James was crying. Chen crying. James crying. Yeah. The whole thing, everybody was just crying. Yeah, yeah. Like I thought it was supposed to be a fun day, but everyone was crying. Yeah. So the story is actually like more more like impressive than the match. You know what I'm saying? And, and the match was really good. The lore. Though. Yeah, the lore was. Yeah. Was great. Yeah. The adaptation was crazy too because you, you know, yeah. Punk up until Evo was looking to be just unstoppable, right? So yeah, he was he, like the shooting. Yeah. Even Tokyo and Street Fighter Five, I feel like he he had this chance to be like the number one player finally. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In a fighting game, and he, it all came together, and the, so it, it happened. You know what I'm saying? So that was great. Um, What's your favorite set? All you can you can even combine all. What's your favorite set in Mortal Kombat? Favorite set Mortal Kombat. Mm. This is hard. Let me see. Alright. Let me see. Oh, that's cool. Um, maybe DJT winning. DJT winning Evo. What was it versus Rio? 2013. Yeah, he was 2013. Yeah, was it against Rio? I forget. Um, was he using his Dakira's player? Oh, you're talking about uh, MK9, right? Yeah, MK9. Yeah. Oh, Cyrax. Yeah, Cyrax. Uh, yeah. 
I forget who it was, but it's just the fact that like it was kind of unexpected. Yeah. And uh, like, cause everybody was like rooting for Rio, uh, CD Junior, Perfect Legend, you know, those yeah, those like OG names. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So we got, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, and uh, the, like the, how hype it was. Like everybody got on the stage and. Like the evil staff almost had to kick everybody, you know what I'm saying? Like it came in pushing everybody off the stage, it was so hype. So you also kind of um, transitioned yourself into different favorite sets for just for a bit. Mm -hmm. um, you also, for people who don't know, you play Dragon Ball fighters mm -hmm. too, right? So that's an anime fighter. It's like a very different sect from the other two. Yeah, but, um, what season do you feel in the Dragon Ball Fighters is the best so far? Right now, we're in a different time, so yeah. it's like it's different from season one. Where season one was kind of impressive a little bit, mm -hmm. so. So yeah, I think like season one was kind of like the discovery phase, yeah. and season two was kind of like when people like, got it down and just like didn't become fun because you didn't get to play. Once you once you lost neutral, that was it. You're stuck, and you couldn't play certain characters because if you put two tall bodies in a team, you're asking to be killed by fuzzies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and Young Fish, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think season 3 is the best right now. It's, I don't know if it's because we're in the quarantine phase and we haven't gotten to see Goichi okay, at a sure. tournament and Sonic Fox, so not everybody's writing their teams and their characters. So we're seeing a lot of diversity. Combos look sicker now because we have different enders. Yeah, and the BNBs look a more polished now and the game looks fun to play and it's so fun. It's the best season. I think so, yeah. Okay. Um, this is an interesting. I ask everybody. This is an interesting question for you because I don't. I I want to know what you're gonna say, but I don't think you have one. But who is your favorite fighting game player? Mm. I knew that was gonna be a weird one for you. Yeah, because it, it changes a lot. It changes a lot. But if I'm gonna pay respects and the guy who, like I said, I used to watch all the Street Fighter Three matches, and I still haven't seen Daigo do the parry. But I'll say Daigo. Pretty. Favorite yes type of for like the the hypest moment and yeah you're talking to like the biggest yeah, stand, stand. Yeah. <laughs> like the biggest type stand yeah, right yeah, but like, uh, yeah, I gotta pay respects yeah but if if I could say like who I think is the strongest the strongest character uh, or strongest player I would say ever I would like to think it's Sonic Fox I think Sonic Fox is. Just because everything he's done, he's went from anime to weird games and he's like only missing Street Fighter at this point. But he kind of had a he repertoire did. in that too. He, did. he was getting top like, beats. Uh, with <laughs> yeah, with Fang. Yeah, he was getting top beats in a very inconsistent game at that moment in time. Yeah. With Fang and even these were like holy. Yeah, people were like doing the optimal thing every time. Yep. So yes, yeah, the game had like you couldn't react. Yeah, actually, that was still 8 frames. Yeah, 8 frames. So, yeah, I would say Daigo, favorite, favorite moment, easily. This is just because of the parry. The parry video, and after following him, watching him through Street Fighter 3 and 4, yeah. like, the crouch fears on DOS, like, just coming, just showing us new stuff that, like, the, like, shows us that the games can be played differently. Like, instead of just doing our regular stuff, like, that we do every day, like, we had, like, the theory that nobody, yeah. everybody's like, what? What is this? Yeah. Or when he was playing, uh, I think it was Arturo Sanchez, and he did the crouch fierce on the, the, the limb. Yeah, and then uh, the super, super yes. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> even five. He's doing stuff for even in mm -hmm. this the game where I I personally feel like it's really hard to come up with new things mm -hmm. in this game. He's, uh, he's doing, what is it, high uh, high kick in the super. Mm -hmm. Like off of just just new in neutral, he'll throw a, a Kyle high kick in neutral into super. Yeah, it's just, a, he just shows like he's like things that you you think oh this is only possible in training mode or yeah, when there's nothing on the line. This guy's uh, striving, he's striving, <laughs> yeah, he's striving <laughs> to do it in real matches and offensive reversal against problem Yep, that's yeah, yeah. oh, that whole that actually. Uh, even no, this is about you. But I'm gonna tend to this really. It's about you. But like his <laughs> defense in a game that defense is so hard to be consistent. Like Street Fighter Five, his his like OS backdash is mm -hmm. is uh, blocking for like it's like blocking for a certain amount of frames and then back jump. Mm -hmm. 
Like he just his defense in Street Fighter Five is is crazy. He yeah, checks yeah. dashes all the time. It's hard. Yeah, he's just like he just strives to to be perfect, like to, for the best. For the know. game. Yeah. Um, so what is okay for all those that are watching now? We are in a quarantine timeline. We are in a I can't say the c word because we might get demonetized even though we're not making any money. But we're in a pandemic mode, aka dark timeline me. Um, but if we do get out of this, what is the future looking like for Kevin? What is your goals in terms of the FGC? Or do you have any goals for FGC? Do you, are you just trying to take right now? Are you trying to fall back into like a mentor position or what? Yeah, so uh, I don't know if there's so goals as like things I, I said I would do before I stopped playing seriously, like grinding and stuff like that back in three, five, four days. I had to take a break to prioritize school and a degree before I got back into video games. Cause I was getting older and I was like, I need something stable. To, yeah, stable. So now I just finally graduated, and I and I've always said once I <laughs> once I do that, <laughs> once I do that, I can go back into do what I want to do, and which is fighting games. So, coming back. Yeah. So that's and it, that's the that's the thought. So I get a job. And then I can use that money to travel, play video games, and do everything I want to do. All right, there we have it. So Kevin's officially back. If we're ever <laughs> able to go out, we have Kevin Tech back, yeah. helping uh, strengthen the scene, strengthen New England. Um, if you could face anybody in an exhibition match, uh, who would it be and why? In what game? Mm. Don't, don't you come prepared. <laughs> Let me see. Sonic Fox and Dragon Ball Fighter. Yep, yep. <laughs> yep. What do you think the score would be? <laughs> it would be very humbling. <laughs> but, but 10 of you, free. But that, if, that, if I could do that, that that's what I would that's do. Really because cool. I've been in a tournament where he was when at the beginning of the game, and I was like, if I have to fight him, I don't see the point in fighting him because I wasn't prepared or anything like that. So now that I feel like I kind of know the game, yeah. and if I had the time to put into the game and actually do an not? exhibition, yeah. I, I would like to do over Sonic Box, Dragon Ball Fighters. Alright. Um, is that, so when you do come back to the game, you're primarily going to put a lot more time to or you're going to still play every day, like, equally? Yeah, so I really like Dragon Ball. I like it at a competitive level. I like how uh, stable it is. Like, if you're a better player, you're more likely to win and stuff like that. But I do want to play a, a Street Fighter, Grand Blue, um, Mortal Kombat, yeah. as, and I think I can, I'm able to do all those at the same time. I believe I can do that. So I want to play those games because I feel like by like by not putting much time into them, I was still reasonably good. And I feel like if I de dedicate, uh, it's easy. It's, it's can only get better. Yeah, I can, it can easily get really worse. Yeah, yeah. So because like I barely played Dragon Ball, and I. And like the week of or prior to going to ECT where I thought I was going to get watched by everybody I just entered one and I got nine so I'm like yeah I'm like uh, what happens if I actually play these games right so yeah so what's your, what's your favorite aspect of five games like footsies is like what we like about it. yeah so a lot of people don't know this about me but like uh, I'm Kate Verde I said we like soccer but I actually like I wasn't too good at soccer, <laughs> but I liked uh, playing tennis, and I think yeah, it was, came yeah, out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, I like like because there was a tennis court next to my house in Cape Verde, and people were good, so I was like, I, I picked it up quick, and I liked it, and so I think the one v one aspect, okay, and the so fact that everything's under your control. It's, it's, it's not like a team, so you you never play like a e-sport, for example. You never play like a league. Or, yeah, yeah, where you, you got yourself playing depending like on people. Yeah, or even sometimes. I'm the same way. Actually. Yeah, depending on like if you play like 2K or Madden, you gotta kind of depend on the AI to do yeah. what you want to do sometimes. So I like that I have control control over everything. You know? Okay. Cool. Um, that's it for me. Do you have anything you want to say? Any kind of final mm -hmm. sign off for anybody? Uh, let me see. Well, basically, uh, I'm, I want to. So I'm happy that you guys are doing this because I feel like we've been in the shadows for a long time. I feel like we have good players and we have potential, but we don't have exposure. Yeah, and it's been too long like that and I'm, 
we got new guys like you guys and with motivation and the, the time and we're, we're gonna get there I feel I feel like we're gonna, gonna, gonna get the exposure if people want to follow you on any social media platform, how can they follow you? So I'm um, at, at Kevin Tech, so K-E-V-I-N-T-E-Q-U-E, -E -E, on uh, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, <laughs> or <laughs> anywhere you want. Yeah, that's Twitch. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely check out this guy. Do you have a stream schedule set up? Or? Uh, not yet. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm right. still figuring out what I want to do with this. Yeah. Cool. All right, bro. Thanks so much. Right, thank you. This is Kevin. Uh, that was another episode of Beyond Frame Data. Thank you guys for so much for tuning in during these dark eras.